if I have hormonal issues and gut issues, where do I start? Like, do I start with the hormone stuff? Do I start with the gut health stuff? Hey everyone, welcome to the Nourished and Thriving Show. I'm your host, Katie Lovett. I'm a registered dietitian on a mission to help you increase your impact and legacy on the world while healing your gut and reducing your IBS symptoms. I'm so grateful to have you here. Each week, I'll inspire you to live vibrantly and provide valuable resources and information that empowers you to take bold action towards your health goals. Before we dive in, make sure you follow or subscribe to my show wherever you're listening so you never miss an episode. Ready? Let's go! Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. I say guys, but I think most of my listeners are probably women. That's who most of my clients are. So if you're a guy, welcome. If you're a woman who's probably actually listening to this, welcome. This episode is for you. Guys need to know this too, because you probably live with or love a woman and you have hormones too. So if you haven't guessed already, I just said it. You've read the title. We're talking about hormones today. And to the women listening to this podcast, I think it would be a very rare occurrence for you to have never given any thought to your hormones. We talk a lot about, you know, like, oh, PMS or hot flashes with menopause or perimenopause. Blame our emotions on our hormones. I can't tell you how many times my husband made a comment about my hormones while I was pregnant and like not in a great mood. The thing is like, even though it is quote unquote hormonal, like any emotional, you know, feelings that we're feeling from those hormone changes are very real, right? In the moment. But as women, you know, it's really cool because our hormones change and adapt through our different life stages. And I just want to take a moment and say how remarkable and amazing our bodies are that we can carry life and grow life inside of our bodies and our bodies adapt to that when you know when we're healthy and able to i know not everyone wants to or is able to have children so you know but the woman's body is is really remarkable and I really love that this age is more about empowering women to know more about their ovulation and about their hormonal cycles and hormones and life stages of hormones and all of that. But it leaves a lot of questions out there because it's new information to a lot of people or incomplete information or misinformation being circulated by you know, like internet gurus who don't actually know what they're talking about, please don't get your hormone education all from like TikTok or reels or something like I do reels too, but just make sure that your source is somebody that you really trust. But one question that I get asked a lot about in the intersects with my work is hormones and gut health. Now, if you are a client, hello, thanks for listening. I love my clients. If you're not a client, that's cool too. I love you too. But um, if you're a client, you know this about me. You know that I look at you as a whole person whenever we're first starting out and as we continue to work together, I want to know all the things. So I ask about your, you know, your hormones. I ask about past antibiotic use. I ask about everything. And so hormones do come up, even if you don't realize that that's what you're coming to me for. It's not like the forefront of everything that we do all the time, but I do consider hormones whenever we're coming up with your specific blueprint for gut rehab. So I wanted to just break it down for some people today because I get asked a lot about hormones. I see a lot of questions about hormones. There's a lot of confusion circulating around what's normal, what's not normal, what can you do, what can you not do, what helps, what doesn't help, all of that, and how it all relates back to gut health. One of the big questions I get asked a lot is if I have hormonal issues and gut issues, where do I start? Like, do I start with the hormone stuff? Do I start with the gut health stuff? And my answer is typically gut health. And we're going to talk about why that is today. Okay. So get ready and let's dive in. We're going to get a little bit sciencey. So 
If you need to pause it and write some notes, that's okay. If you need to rewind, go rewind, listen to it. I'm going to try and break it all down for you guys like I always do, but I am going to use some bigger terms and some more scientific words here. Okay. So first of all, we're going to throw the big, like a big word out at you it is called the estrobilome. Estrobilome is the collection of bacteria in your gut, right? Your microbiome. So within your microbiome, you have your estrobilome. And this is like a subset group of your microbiome that can specifically impact the circulating estrogen levels in your body. Pretty cool, right? Like remember whenever we thought that gut the like colon was just for like reabsorbing water and eliminating waste? Like there is so much more going on in your intestines. So you can actually impact the estrogen levels in your body from this subset of bacteria in your gut. So that's the first thing that should tip you off here is if you have an imbalance of bacteria or dysbiosis, you may have heard it called, in your gut, your estrogen can be affected in your body. So that's something that is actually included on the functional stool test that I use for my clients in gut rehab is a marker for that, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute because you can actually measure it and there's quite a lot of research about it. So definitely something important. So you have estrogen circulating in your blood, right? Like you go to the doctor, they draw blood, they measure your hormone levels. But you also it have some that recirculates throughout your body. So it is most of it exits. Whenever you are healthy gut, you know, healthy body, everything's in balance. Your estrogen is circulating in your blood, goes into your liver, okay? And then it goes into your gut from there. So your liver helps to kind of break down that into estrogen, then it goes into the gut. And then your it it meets with your estrobilome there in your gut. And the estrobilome specifically impacts estrogen levels by making an enzyme. And this enzyme is what my test tests for. And that enzyme is called beta-glucuronidase. So beta-glucuronidase has a few different functions in the body and in the gut. So one of them is breaking down carbohydrates. Another one is nutrient absorption through the gut. And then another one is reabsorbing the estrogen that we talked about and recycling it. So it's like I said, it's going to say, hey, we're going to recycle this estrogen and reabsorb it and activate it, or we're going to eliminate this estrogen. So if you have too much of this beta-glucuronidase, then too much estrogen gets recycled, reabsorbed into the body and recircled. So if you have too much estrogen, that's what's called estrogen dominance. So you've probably heard that term before is that estrogen dominance. We're going to talk about those symptoms and kind of what that looks like here in a minute. But I want to go back to the estrobilome first and the microbiome and the dys dysbiosis. So remember, bacteria produce beta-glucuronidase. Okay, if you have too much beta-glucuronidase, too much estrogen gets reabsorbed and activated, and then you have estrogen dominance. So, but it goes back to the bacteria. So if you have too many of the types of bacteria that produce beta-glucuronidase, that's where this all kind of goes off the wheels, right? Versus, you know, an a better balance of other types of organisms are going to bring that beta-glucuronidase into better balance. And then you have what you should have, which is most of the estrogen is eliminated with your waste and some, like a smaller amount, is recycled, reabsorbed, all of that. Okay, are you with me? All the science things. So an imbalance, you know, that estrogen dominance that we were talking about are, you know, things that you think of around like hot, like hard periods, like Hot, heavy periods, PMS, irritability, lots of bloating, lots of cramps, all of that type of thing is, you know, I, I want you to think about estrogen dominance with that type of thing. And, you know, because we see this beta-glucuronidase being increased and then estrogen being increased based on the bacteria, we know that the foods 
the impact that estrogen dominance also negatively impact our gut health. And that's something I really love about what I do is you don't, you know, you'll see online like, oh, here's an endometriosis diet. Here's a gut health diet. Here's a hormone diet. Here's all these different specific diets. And really that sounds really attractive <laughs> to people because you're looking for an answer and there it is with bright shining lights in front of you. But really there is no one perfect diet. I've said that before even though we really want there to be one. You know, we want it to be easy. We want it to be black and white. It's just not like that. But what works for one works for the other is the good news. So even though there's no like perfect, bright, shiny diet, by eating foods that promote gut health, you're also eating foods that promote hormone health and balance. So that's the good news with all of that. So Whenever we're thinking about hormone imbalance and gut imbalance and really most chronic diseases, right? We're looking at inflammation, a state of inflammation. So there's food and then we're going to talk some lifestyle stuff too, because that's real important also. Uh, you can't do one without the other. So inflammatory foods, you know what they are, right? Everyone knows what they are. It's just a matter of not eating them as much. Highly processed foods, highly refined carbohydrates, excess added sugar, high alcohol, high dairy, high levels of red meat, inflammatory cooking oils, all of that stuff that we know is not good for us, isn't good for us, right? It's not good for our health, gut health, it's not good for our hormone health, it's not good for anything. Now, you know I'm a balanced person and I'm not one who's gonna say, you can never eat such and such again. Like, that's not how it is. It's just bringing things back into balance, right? And finding something that works for you, that makes you feel really, really good. So one diet that is used a lot in research, there's a lot of research supporting it. It's a blue zone, which is where people live to older ages and are capable and strong and independent, which is what we all, you know, I think really want as we get older. It's the Mediterranean diet. And so there's a study that was, that was looking at the Mediterranean diet and its impact on estrogen dominance. And it actually showed that following a Mediterranean diet for six months, reduced estrogen levels by 40%, 40%, right? And it probably did a whole lot of other things too, right? That helped that person. I bet that they were feeling a lot less brain fog, a lot better energy. They're having a lot better bowel movements, all of these things, right? Because whenever you change food for one specific reason, to a healthier diet, you're going to get other benefits as well. And that's the really cool thing about food approaches to our health. And whenever we're looking at estrogen dominance, if you are thinking about other hormones such as progesterone or testosterone or anything like that, they're all connected, right? They're all messengers. They're all in balance with each other. So if one is elevated, it's going to dominate others and it's going to make those levels go down. And whenever one is deficient, so say you don't have enough beta glucuron a day, so you're not going to have enough recirculating estrogen levels. That's kind of the other end of the spectrum. Those, it allows, you know, testosterone or progesterone to increase, right? And, and to kind of crowd out that estrogen and you get different problems with both ends of that spectrum. So we want everything to be balanced, just like we do with all things in health. We don't th want things on one extreme and or the other. But 40% in six months can help balance out those estrogen levels, which helps balance out, you know, the other hormonal levels too. So that is the point I was trying to make with that. And that's just one example. I don't think Mediterranean diet is necessarily perfect. It's not perfect for everyone, but it's a really great place to start. And I think it's a pretty moderately, a pretty moderately placed approach to food and to eating that's really doable. So I, I think, you know, if you're struggling with hormonal imbalance, start with just nutrition. You know, you don't need necessarily some real fancy testing to figure out all the exact things. Start with food first if you're able to. You know, if you're able to make those decisions and stick to the plan and make those habit changes on your own, do that, you know? Start eating more veggies, 
cut out the refined carbs, cut out the excess, you know, alcohol and dairy and inflammatory oils, add more plant foods and greens and veggies and seeds and see how you feel, you know, give it some time. But most people who make these changes are going to start feeling better within a couple of weeks. Now, if you're already somebody who's doing these things, if you have a really clean diet and you're still struggling with hormone issues, you're still struggling with bloating and gas and digestive issues, that's a really great time to get some help. If you are really struggling to implement those changes, if you're like, I know I need to eat better. I know I feel so much better whenever I do eat, you know, a more whole foods diet and you're just struggling to implement it, you might need some help too. And that's okay. Like that's what people like me do is we help link arms and walk with you and troubleshoot and figure out why is this person struggling with this? Why are they, you know, making the changes and then self-sabotaging or falling off after a few weeks? Like, why are these changes not sticking? Or if they're making the changes that, you know, look good at a basic level, like what needs to be fine-tuned? Is stress being managed? Is sleep adequate? Is there a deficiency going on or a dysbiosis that needs some supplementation to help balance it out? Stuff like that. If that's you, I would love to talk with you. I think it's really important that you work with somebody who you really connect with, really trust, and like their approach. And so if you're listening to this podcast, if you've been listening for a while, obviously we connect. (laughs) Obviously what I say resonates with you. So if you find yourself needing some help, reach out and, and say hi. I'm over on Instagram a lot. Send me an email, whatever works for you. And I just want to make sure that you get the support and the help that you need to live your most vibrant, beautiful life. So that's all for today. Thanks guys. Thank you so much for listening to the entire episode. I hope you are feeling inspired and empowered to take bold action towards your health goals. If you enjoy what you heard, don't forget to follow my show so you never miss a new episode. And it would mean the world to me if you left me a review so others knew what to expect from my show. Last, get in touch. Let me know what bold action you're taking. Let me know how you're inspired. Follow me on Instagram at the underscore healthy gut underscore dietitian. I've put a link in my show notes for you so you can simply click and follow. Come say hi. I respond to all my messages and I can't wait to get in touch.